I had been working at Tomorrow Entertainment, which was a little production company that GE started before they ever had any dreams of buying NBC or a network. Um, so it was doing very statusy, Emmy-winning movies for television, um, A War of Children, uh, Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, Birds of Prey, really wonderful movies for television. And I was uh, the reader and story editor, whatever, you know, finding material for them. And I, d I decided that my next move would be to go to ABC because I just thought network television was, to be at a network would be at the hub of the industry. And, and I, I just thought, you know what, what fun that would be to, to, it would be like a graduate course in television to be in the, you know, the place where it all happens, where the programming and the scheduling and the development of these shows happen. And so, and I knew that ABC was my only hope because I was pregnant, I was female, you know, I was, by that time, 29 or 30. I, there was no way that the more staid and so, stodgy at the time, CBS or NBC, would ever hire a pregnant female, ever, you know, in an entry-level job. So, so I went and interviewed with ABC, and ABC was in the toilet at the time. I mean, there were only three networks, and they were number four. <laughs> they were doing so badly that there were jokes, you know. There were jokes about uh, Patty Hearst, who was, had been missing, she had gone missing, the heiress who had gone missing with the SLA, whatever, that uh, Patty Hearst um, is in hiding. The reason why nobody can find her is that she's starring in a show on ABC on Friday nights. So they hired me because they were desperate for creative, juicy, young people who you know wanted to be there, even pregnant. I interviewed with Andy Siegel, who was in charge of comedy programming, and then he wanted to hire me, but he had to clear it with his boss, who was Michael Eisner, who was head of West Coast programming at ABC at the time. And so my interview, and I told Andy I was pregnant, and then I had to tell Michael I was pregnant. You couldn't tell I was only three months pregnant. And, and I, I remember thinking, I'm gonna blow this job, and, and I'm so sorry that I'm gonna blow this job because I want it so badly. So I said, Michael, um, I gotta tell you that I'm, I'm pregnant, and I'm gonna have a baby in, um, in January. So I like the job that I have, at Tomorrow Entertainment. If it's more comfortable for you, we can talk about this in February. And Michael, and I, I love Michael Eisner now, always, ever, because of this. You know, Michael said, okay, my wife and I are having a baby too. Aren't we coming back to work afterwards? And I said, well, yeah, I think we are. And he said, well, why is that a factor? And he just like dismissed the entire, I just adored him, you know, and, and he hired me. I was a program executive, um, which is the lowest level network job, which is kind of a liaison job between the network and the, and the producers of whatever shows they have on the air. So you're assigned three or four shows. Um, there's a few program executives, and, and you're assigned three or four shows, and um, you're the liaison. Oh my god, the first shows I was assigned were so bad. They were just so bad. There was an Aaron Spelling firehouse comedy, and oh god, something with Karen Valentine playing a, a the common cause lobbyist in Washington, the worst. And I said to Michael, okay, <clears throat> I, you've assigned me to four shows. All four of them are horrible, <laughs> I said in my usual tactful way. And I really think they're going to fail. So does that mean that you're going to fire me when they fail? And he said, oh, no. By the time they fail, it'll be, it'll be not my fault, not your fault. I mean, it'll be in the ether somewhere, the reason why they failed. You know, <laughs> don't worry about it. And actually, you know, I... I um, Andy Siegel, who was my direct boss at the time, uh, showed, I said, you know, show me some of your favorite pilots that didn't sell. Let's get the stuff off the shelves. I want to see what this network is up to and what, what, you know, what they don't do. He showed me Barney Miller, which was at the time called The Life and Times of Barney Miller. And I said, well, this has to be, this has to go on. Andy said, well, they passed on it. I said, okay, this can't happen. This can't happen. I've got these horrible shows I'm assigned to and this is on the shelf. So I went and talked to Mike Eisner. Eisner about that, and I said, you have to just put Barney Miller on the air, assign me Barney Miller, and give somebody else these other shows, and just, it's a fabulous show, Michael. Anyway, I'm sure it wasn't me, but for some variety of reasons, Barney Miller went on the air, and I actually got to work on it, so that was delightful.